Please welcome Kevin Hart. Now, listen, now, wait a second. Like, this is, this is that's an amazing response, but you must be used to that because you're one of the few comedians in the world you sell out huge arenas, like yeah. the O2 Arena in London and Madison Square Garden. Yeah. And uh, what's the big arena? Yeah. Down in Philly. Uh, what's Financial. the big Lincoln Lincoln Financial, Financial Stadium. down in Philly, where you're from, right? Yeah, we did uh, yeah. 53,000 people. Yeah. 53,000 people. 53,000 people. I'm a, what do you call it? A big deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. nice. How do you play? <laughs> How do you play uh, a joke to 53,000 people? How do you, like, um, hold a room like that, man? Well, you know, I think I pride myself on making those rooms intimate rooms. I'm a storyteller. So when you tell stories, the beauty of doing it with an amazing audience is captivating that audience to the point where they're following your every word until a punchline comes. So I paint pictures, but they're realistic pictures. At the end of the day, you can put yourself in my shoes and you can see yourself in the stories that I'm telling because the stories are relatable. I don't separate my Myself. That's why people love me, because I'm one of you guys. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, it's it's good to know. It's yeah. good to know why people love you. I yeah. wouldn't want that to be a mystery. No, no, no. You have to, yeah. you have to make sure that you never lose sight of reality. And mm -hmm. I think with regardless of any success that you have, you have to maintain that connection you with really your You really think base. you can hold on to reality? Because like you're, you're so huge. You, you hit 30 million people on Twitter today, I did. right? Everybody danced around the world. Yeah. <laughs> I tweeted, I tweeted, dance. Everybody, I just hit 30 million. I want everybody to dance. That's and I really, I really danced? believe everybody danced. All right, mind, yeah. all right. Well, you've got so many other things going on. you got two movies out right now at the yes, same time. you got The Secret Life of Pets. Yes. Uh, you got Central Intelligence yes. with uh, Dwayne Johnson yes. going at the same time. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, man. Secret Life of Pets, you play uh, kind of a militant... White uh, bunny. White bunny. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I do not. I do not think of you as a militant white bunny. Well, first of all, uh, I took it because I wanted to play somebody white. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, I jumped at the opportunity. Uh -huh. I said I'm not going to get this opportunity a lot. I said I'll, I'll take it. They was like, it's a bunny. I said it don't matter. He's white. I want to do it. <laughs> um, and then when they told me that he was militant. The whole thing with this bunny is that he's starting a revolution. You know, this guy mm -hmm. is in charge of, of taking this group of pets and turning them against humans. And I was like, that's me. I do that all the time. <laughs> so I, uh, I brought my, my characteristic traits to the bunny, and they loved it, man. They allowed me to improv and play around as much as possible. It came out good. Now, do, you, do you have pets of your own? I do have pets. I have two dogs. I have, do you think uh, that when you're not around that they are doing the kind of things these animals are doing? A hundred percent. They have a secret life? A hundred percent. I have a Doberman pincher and I have a men pin. So, What's um, a men pin? A men pin is a small version of what the big dog is. So, oh, a um, mini pincher. Yeah. A mini pincher. I did yeah. it as a joke, though. Like, I bought it as a joke because I said when people come to my house, they're going to say, oh, wow, look at the big Doberman. Whoa, he got a little one, too. Um, <laughs> Yeah, nobody. <laughs> do people do that? No, nobody no one gets does it. that. Nobody has done it, and it's pissed me off. Uh, <laughs> it's made me feel like the little one was a waste of money. Nobody gets it. Like you, you're there for a punchline. That's the only reason why you're there, is to be a punchline. And God, nobody. I hope, I hope that dog's not watching right now. No, that's That'd be the really dog. depressing to find out that you were just there for a punchline. Well, that's the dog that's doing stuff when I'm gone. That dog cooked potato salad one day. I know he did, because. <laughs> Listen, I don't know how to make potato salad, and my lady can't cook. I came home, potato salad was on the table. Who cooked the potato salad? Had to be the dog. That's logical. Had to be the dog. That's just pure... 100%. percent pure, pure logic. Yeah. That's my dogs, though, man. I love them. I'm, I've become a dog guy. My fiance has turned me into a dog guy. I wasn't. I can admit it. I was against pets. But see, that's what women do. Well, you were against all pets? I was against... I was against my house that can mess my house up. I didn't want... <laughs> Nothing that could mess my house up. How did she turn you into a dog person? How did she, how did she do? What women do, man. They make you do what you don't want to do. That's what women do. 
That's a talent. That's a, that's a talent that women have. They beat you down. I don't know how she did it. Uh -huh. I think she asked me for two years straight. And one day, I might have been drunk. I was like, all right. And, uh, and next thing I know, we get these dogs, man. And now, the dogs sleep in the bed. I have no say-so in it. My, my Doberman, like, literally, I woke up. This dog's respect level is so low. From, like, she... <laughs> Her face is like on my face, and I'm like, "Yo, what are you doing?" She's like, Ugh. like she, "You're she talking about the dog still, the dog. right? This is not your." No, I just didn't know you crossed over between the making no. you do things you don't want to do. Happen. Yeah, my lady lets it happen. I, I don't even have control over my bed anymore. Like I, I literally come in there, dogs in the bed. I have to find a position to sleep in. Yeah. Like, like normally a dog in the bed and he looks for the comfort spot. That's yeah. me. Like I'm like, excuse me, I don't want to wake anybody up. Excuse me. Uh, Why don't I just sleep yeah, across I'll the just, bottom of the bed I'll just right take here. this little nook version of the bed mm. that you left for me. But it's, yeah. it's my life. I accept it. I don't complain about it. And you also have other projects going at the same time. I don't know how you even have time to be here right now because you've also got a digital partnership called Laugh Out Loud with yes. Lionsgate. You're writing a memoir that comes out yes, in 2017 yes. next year. Yeah. This I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I don't even know what day it is. Right now, I'm sleeping. This is how I sleep. Yeah. No, it's no. Friday. It's Friday. It's Friday here. But I got to be somewhere else tomorrow. I don't know what day it's going to be there. I got to be out the country. <laughs> no, honestly, I'm, I'm working a lot, man. I love the load that I have. Yeah. Uh, you know, it is a lot, and I put a lot on my plate. But at the end of the day, God doesn't give you anything that you can't handle. And I'm a firm believer that I'm not only handling these things, but I'm doing it at the, the highest uh, of my potential. Like, I'm, I'm not only handling it, but I'm, I'm in love with it. I'm in love with my craft. I'm in love with the fact that I'm succeeding. Yeah. So I'm, oh, I'm fantastic. happy. Man. I'm happy. That's a great feeling. It's an amazing feeling. Oh, can you hang out? I want to talk a little bit more. What if I said no? What do you say that? And I was like, what no. What I do, I would just, you'd come back and I'd weep into the camera for about five minutes. Okay. All right. Well, then in that case, I can hang on. Your audience All is right. great. I'm going to hang on. We'll be right back with Kevin Hart.